Hello epic viewers from around the world, today I'm going to commence my early review of the Marvel Legends Red Skull Onslaught Wave, which is slated to be released come 2016. It's a set, a paradigm of perfection, it's this action figure series epitome of perfection, it's this action figure wave, the embodiment of resounding perfection. Let's find out, I'm going to meticulously and objectively analyze these figurines to determine whether they merit the premium prices, or to determine whether they do not warrant the premium prices, so let's find out. If these figurines are worthwhile, let's find out if these figurines are meritorious. Let's find out if this wave should be obtained by the avid Marvel Legends collector. The figurines encompassed within this wave will likely include the illustrious, revered rogue, the one and only Captain America, the audacious Agent Carter, Mockingbird, Whirlwind, Taskmaster, and the infamous Cotton Mouse, as well as Scourge. If you purchase all the figurines within this wave, you can assemble your own Red Skull Onslaught. Is he the main appeal of the wave? In my opinion, he is. Now, what do I think about the textures, the shadings, the decos, the sculpts, the aesthetics, the hues, and the accessories of these figurines, I think that they're relatively mediocre in all facets. These figurines command a staggering premium price of over $20 each. The question is, do they warrant their asking price, or, sh or should you forgo purchasing them? Remember, they're retailing for 250% more than the Toy Biz Marvel Legends figurines. Unlike the Toy Biz Marvel Legends figurines, these figures lack finger joint articulation. They lack toe articulation. In conjunction with lacking finger joint and toe articulation, they also do not have as many ample points of articulation as the Toy Biz Marvel Legends figurines had. Now, what are my other gripes appertaining to these figurines? You may ask. Let me demystify that answer to that inquiry right here, right now. Their accessories are just relatively mediocre. Unlike the Toy Biz Marvel Legends figurines that retail for 250% less than the Hasbro Marvel Legends figurines, they do not come with stupendous bases or a slew of accessories. Also, these figurines do not all come with fisted interchangeable hands. I just detest the fact that not all their hands are fisted. I would prefer if my action figures had finger joint articulation or fisted hands. Their open hands, their open hands that are preposed, look awkward. I want my figurines to look as though they're poised to charge into the fray of battle and decimate anyone within their vicinity. Now, what's the real novelty of this wave, other than insipid? Mediocracy and the build a figure Red Skull Onslaught. Well, I do not recollect Toy Biz ever releasing a World One figurine, nor do I ever recollect them releasing a Scourge or Cotton Mouse figurine. So, characters within the prodigious Marvel Universe are finally being materialized into action figure form. Therefore, this wave has more merit than the Absorbing Man wave in my objective opinion i do like the rogue i love the fact that her fingers are clenched together in new fist poses i do love the fact that um i'll finally be able to procure a figurine of whirlwind and cotton mouse as well as scourge however i don't like the fact that Another Captain America that's inferior to the Toy Biz Captain Americas is being produced. I also detest this Taskmaster figurine since he does not look as epic and since he does not have as many points of articulation in stark contrast to the superior Toy Biz Taskmaster figurine that superseded the Hasbro Taskmaster figurine in all facets. The Agent Carter figurine is relatively mediocre. 
the Mockingbird figurine is relatively mediocre. Again, these figurines do not all come with interchangeable hands that have fingers clenched together in your fists. It would be great if they could come bundled with fisted hands, but that's not always the case. I think the Scourge action figure looks epic. I think the Rogue action figure isn't bad either, but for 250% more than a Toy Biz Marvel Legends figurine, these figurines just are not worse. A hefty premium price of over $20. At most, I'd pay $15 for the Whirlwind figurine. At most, I'd pay $15 for the Scourge figurine. At most, I would pay... $15 for the Rogue figurine. I wouldn't buy the Captain America figurine for $15, nor would I buy the Agent Carter figurine or the Mockingbird figurine for $15. The Taskmaster figurine, I probably wouldn't even buy for $10. The Cotton Mouse figurine, I'd probably buy for $8. I'm just um, relaying the price points I'd pay to obtain these figurines, but um, as a totality, I would raise this set to be a Spirit of Ten only because there's some new characters within this wave that have been materialized into an action figure form. Or I should say that there are characters within the Marvel Legends series that have finally been materialized into an action figure form, which is why this um, set of the totality should be rated uh, Spirit of Ten. The Red Skull Onslaught figurine seems to be relatively mediocre. I detest the fact that his hands are not fisted or clenched together into fists. I also would have preferred that they came with more accessories, had superior paint applications, better textures, higher quality decos, and better sculpts, but it is what it is, so I'd rate this lot to be a 3 out of 10. It doesn't merit a premium price of over $140 for the set. I would probably buy most of these figurines for under $10 each. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.